Let's pray tonight. Would you stand as we pray and come into agreement? As we said, we believe in, in the God that we serve. That, that's why we come here. We don't, we don't just come to, to, to read and we don't just come to, to sit through a Bible study, but we come because we, we bring our faith together and we, and we believe and we, we pray. And, and this, is, this is where we put our faith in action to, to join in to, with, with those that are here today. And we know that God is going to hear and, and, and touch. Father, we thank you tonight. First of all, Father, we thank you that God, that we can come into your throne room. And we thank you, Father, that we have access before you, God, into the, into, into the throne room of grace, Father, before the mercy seat. That, God, that we have, we have come because of Jesus Christ who, is, who has given us right. He has given us access. He has given us his, his, his own blood that we might access. He has covered us and washed us. And, Father, we are regenerated. We are the righteousness, your righteousness in Christ Jesus because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the cross of Calvary, Father, and all that was... All that was done for us in that, in that moment, God, when Christ said, it is finished. Every work is done. Everything that is needed, Father, has been put in place. And God, therefore, tonight, God, we come before you. And we lift each and every one of these requests to you, God. We pray, Father, for Peter's grandfather who's lost his wife and lost his son, Father. Their uncle, God, we just pray for their family. That, God, that your hand would be upon them. That, God, that you would comfort and, and, and meet their every need, God. I pray that, Father, that they would experience the peace that comes from knowing you, God. And that your power would be made known to them. Father, we pray for Aaron, Father, Aaron, Father. Father, and the Rod Rodriguez family. God, we just pray, Holy Spirit, that your mighty power would, would rest upon them. You see this void, Father, this, this huge gaping hole that has been left in their family. And God, today we just ask that, Father, that by your mighty power, through your Holy Spirit tonight, you would minister, Father, to the husband, to the children, Father, to the child that was born, God. I pray that, Father, that through time, God, you would help them, Father, understand, give them the strength, Father, the peace, Father, the Holy Hope that is only found in Jesus Christ. I pray that God that during this time they would turn to you. They would put their trust in you Father. For you said God you would not forsake those who have placed their trust in you God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be that friend that sticks closer than a brother Father. Be the father that overtakes and, and watches over his children Father. I pray that God that your spirit and power would be made known to them God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for Nioli, Father. This young lady, Father, who, is, who has suffered so much, God, and even now, Father, has had seizures for whatever reason, God, and whatever it may be, God, let it be exposed, Father, if there has been foul play. But, God, we pray for healing, God. Father, I pray that, God, that this, this does not negate the fact that, Father, that you will touch her body, that you will heal her, that you will raise her up for the glory in the honor of her of your name and that God that you would be with her mother her family God as they are struggling through this that God you have seen father Joanne and and, and, and their and her husband father as they have had to encounter one thing after another and now God we put them in your hands for father in your hands God no man can touch in your hands father every blessing comes and Lord they cannot be refused God in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that holy Holy Spirit, your mighty power would be at work in each and every one of them. That Holy Spirit, today we just lift this friend or family member, God, to you that has this eating disorder. We just ask that God, that your spirit, Father, would be with them. That you would watch over them. That God, that you would help them. Father, that you would heal them for the glory and the honor of your name. We're praying, Father, for that mighty working power. That supernatural power of Jesus Christ in us, Father, as we pray. And as we join together our faith tonight, God. That God, that by your Holy Spirit, you would break every chain. Uh, Father, every everything. Father, every sickness. Every addiction. God, we come against even now principalities and powers and rulers of 
darkness, O God, whom you, Father, cause to have peace in the heavens because you are the ruler, the king over all things for the glory and the honor of your name. We give you the praise, God, tonight for these, Father, that have had a, that have graduated, Father. We thank you, Father, for, for the great things that you have done in our lives, God. And we will never take for granted every single blessing that you have brought into our home, God. And I just pray that you would continue to minister to them, Father, mightily and powerfully, Father. I lift up my friend Rick to you, God. You see the struggles that he has gone through and has endured tonight. And God, I just pray that your mighty hand would be upon him, Father, that you would continue to strengthen him, lift him up, direct his steps, that God, that his life would be an offering unto you continually, God, that you may receive the glory and the honor out of it. Father, we lift up honor to you today, God. We thank you, Father, for a life, God, that is surrendered to you. I pray that, God, that she would experience your goodness, your mercies, Father, all the days of her life, God, that you would direct her every step, that you would cover your her home, her family, Father, under the shadow of the Almighty, Father, that your spirit, God, would be upon her and use her mightily, Father, in the kingdom, that, God, that you would receive the glory out of a life, Father, that is surrendered fully and completely to you. God, we thank you tonight, Father, as we get into the Word. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be upon every bit of it, that you would open the eyes of our understanding, give us wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ that we may hear, that we may know, that we may see, but that we may live in Jesus' name according to your mighty power that is at work in each and every one of us, God. We thank you, God, again and again and again. And I pray that, Father, that each and every need that's represented here, Father, whether spoken or unspoken, each one would be met in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you, you may be seated, but man, I'm telling you, we could we could just have prayer meeting tonight. Amen. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to God. Once you start understanding how prayer works and how powerful prayer is, I'm telling you, you you begin to you begin to do it. You begin to employ the 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 gift that God has given us, the weapon of our warfare. The, 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 by, through prayer, we have fellowship with Him by the Holy Spirit. What an, what an awesome privilege we have tonight. And, and you know, you, I, I believe the disciples felt the same way because every time Jesus was either coming to, going, coming from one, or going to a prayer meeting, and they said, teach us how to pray because they understood that's where the, His strength came from. They understood that's where His power came from. They understood that the relationship that He had with the Father, that He could not be moved from His purpose, it was all because of the relationship that He had in prayer with the Father. And it was that connection that was so strong with the Father that nothing could do deter him from, from fulfilling the purpose that he had come to fulfill. And, and the same thing for you and me. And the disciples said, help us to pray. You know, sometimes we don't know how to pray. Sometimes, sometimes we have a difficult time praying. So, you know, we may just be, be beginning in prayer. Well, I can tell you this, just begin to do it. Just start talking to God. It'll get easier and easier. It'll be better and better. As they say, it'll get gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. And I'm so thankful tonight. We're going to continue and we're going to probably close out tonight on our on this, uh, this message, this series. But uh, we've been talking about uh, God's eternal purpose and, and the, the instrument of His eternal purpose, which is you and I, the church. The body of Christ, those of us that are here that are that are called by God, that are filled with the Holy Spirit, that that Christ now lives in us. Now, never, never make light of this. Never make light of the fact that Christ lives in you and he is the hope of glory that is in each and every one of us. So I'm going to pick up where we left off and, and just kind of do a little bit of background. But John chapter one and verse 14, you see, John says that. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. And, and so we see Christ, again, we've talked about this. We see Christ come as a man. God come as a man. 
And we saw this. So we see God coming as a man and he was laying out for us what he was going to do in each and every person who would call upon his name, who would give him the glory and the honor, who would allow him to come and live within them. Because as we said, and we're going to get into it, he will not do anything against your will. You see, this is the one reason, one of the greatest reasons that you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made because we have a free will. God will not do it against your will. He will only come to you. He will draw you to Himself, but you are the one that has to make the choice. And and upon that choice, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully because you can choose not to. Wonderfully if you choose to. I mean, there's, there, there, there's so much that, that hangs in the balance when in, in, in one moment, in one decision, in one choice. And think about that. One decision, one moment, one choice. And not only do you change your destiny, but you change the destiny of so many beyond you. I, I'm, I'm so thankful today because God has called us, but I'm so thankful that, that I had an, I, 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 God gave me the ability to say yes. Amen? So we see that Christ lives, He walks on the earth, but now He wants to live in us. Now, now I'm going to go through this. So Luke says the same way that Christ comes and, and, and the same way that Christ came to be in Mary is the same way that He comes to be in us. Do you see Luke says to in Luke chapter 1 and verse 28, Blessed art thou among women. And, and then he, 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 he begins to tell her the news. Remember? He begins to tell her the news. He says, okay, this is, this is why you're blessed among women. Because God has given you and he has, he has given you an opportunity to carry a seed. And I love this. He's given you the opportunity to carry the seed of His Son. Think about that. Now, now and, and, and I'm going to bring that into relationship with you and I because you and I have been given an opportunity to carry the seed of Christ in us. No different than Mary in, the, in, in this sense that God, that Jesus Christ is, is actually alive in the believer. It's not a generic Christ. It's not a part of Christ. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. I, I was thinking about this because, because you know, I mean, we, the, the day and age that we live in, and, and those of us that are believers, we understand we surrender to the mighty power of God, and, and you will never understand anything until you do, and we'll get there. But we, we surrender to the mighty power of God. And so, so I was, I, 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 you know, reading through, and I went through Genesis, started going through Genesis and reading again, and, and, and I thought, well, well, who came first, the man or the woman? And, and who came from who? Did the woman come from the man or the man come from the woman? Now, now this would disturb a lot of, a lot of people in this day where, when, when we're talking about feminism and all that other stuff because the woman actually came from the man. That's what the Bible teaches. So Adam fell into it. God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. He did some surgery, took a rib from his side, and he made a woman. And, and Adam says, flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. Now after that, does man come from woman or woman come or, 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 or the opposite way? Woman come from man. God never changed it. God never changed the process. And you and I are the bride of Christ. Without the man, without the seed, there is no child. So where does the child come from? It comes from the man. It's placed in the egg. The woman is called to be the incubator. She's called to be the protector of that life. She's called to be the defender of the life. She doesn't produce the life, but she is called to defend and protect that life. Now, I want you to think about that. Us as believers, we came, that seed came from God, from Christ, and has been placed inside of us. And all we are to do is to defend that life, to protect the life that is in us, to, to stand up and fight for the faith that was once delivered unto us. 
It is Christ in us. And so the same reason, the same way he comes to the woman and she says, remember, she says, how shall this be seeing that I've never known a man in Luke chapter one and verse 34. So she says she, she has the question just like you and I have the question. God, how are you going to do all of these great things in my life? I don't understand it. I don't know how, you know, God has been doing this, this thing with me lately. I, I don't know. And I just believe that it's of God. I, I, I'm, I'm praying about it, trying to figure some things out. But, but I start having these open visions, and I don't know, I don't know at this point what they're, what they're really about. I, I actually will sit there, and, and I will begin to see things. And I'll close my eyes, and while I'm awake, I'm closed, I have my eyes closed, and it's like I'm, uh, it's like I'm seeing a dream. It's that real. It's not, a, it's not a fog. It's not an imagine. I, I'm actually seeing. I could give you details of the person that I saw and what they were doing and everything. And, 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 it's, and it's amazing, but it's because it's, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so I don't understand that yet, but I'm praying about it because obviously I believe that God is doing something in my life that, that He is going to reveal there's a purpose for what He's doing. But see, it's up to you and I to protect what God is doing in our lives. Satan would love to destroy whatever it is that God is doing in your life. And so he comes to her and he says, and, and, and we can say, and, and, and we can say, well, God, who am I to deserve anything like this? Who am I to deserve such a gift like this? Who are you and I to deserve a, a calling in our life? You and I are nothing apart from Christ. And see, it's Christ in us. And so, so, so Mary has this thing, who am I to carry the Son of God? And see, and I believe the same thing, the same question lies with us. Who are we to carry the seed of God's Son inside of us? You say, well, well, well are you sure that we have the seed of God's Son? Yes. That's what the Bible says. Let me see if I can find it over here in 1 John. Oh, because I don't, I don't want you to think that I'm telling you something that's not true. First John, and you can you can turn over there with me. And he says, um, Let me see, let me see, let me see, because I, I have a different Bible today. And, and sometimes it's a little bit harder. But he says, the seed of Christ has been given to us. And I'm, and I'm trying to see chapter 3, I believe it is. Verse 8, we'll start there. He says, He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sin is, sins from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin for his what? For his what? For his what? His seed. In, in, in His seed remains in him. Now now listen to what it says in the amplified. He says no one born begotten of God deliberately, knowingly and habitually practices sin for God's nature abides in him his principles of life the divine sperm. Now now I know that this is church and we don't talk about things like that. You learned that in biology. But he says his seed. What is he saying? The seed of Christ, it remains in us. And the seed of Christ in us, he, he does not sin. He is not prone to sin. And we're going to learn that and learn why all of that. So, so here Mary says, how can it be that knowing that I have not known a man, so she sees the impossibilities before her, just like you and I many times we see the impossibilities. How can God use me? How can God live in me? Don't you know the wretch that I am? Look at me. And we're focused so much upon ourselves not understanding the grace and the power of God that is at work in us. Because that's really what it is. It's the grace and the power of God that is at work in us. But His seed remains in me. 
If I'm a believer, this is why the, for all who believed, he's given the power to become the sons of God. Why? Because the seed of Christ remains in me. And so, so Mary, the angel replies to her. Remember, he tells her all of these things and, and, he begins to tell her, well, well, your, your, your cousin Elizabeth, who is old, and nobody said she was going to be able to have a child, trying to help her overcome her own mental blocks, just like you and I, the Word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. And sometimes we hear somebody else's testimony, and we begin to think, well, if they could do it, I can do it also. And see, and faith begins, and, and God says that He loves me and that He's no respecter of person. And that what he's done for someone else, he'll do for me. And then, and then faith begins to arise. Then, then, then if that's the case, then God can do it in me. And God can do it through me. And God's power can mightily work. And, and so Mary finally comes to the place where she begins to hear the word of God. And, and she hears the word and her, and her faith is being stirred. And then she comes to, to verse 38 and she says, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Remember. The word was spoken, it was presented, but it, nothing happened until she received the word and she said, finally said, okay, this is beyond my control, but if you can do this, I'm open to it. Do it. And what a powerful thing in our lives when we begin to open ourselves to the word of God. You see, we read the Bible, but we never open ourselves to receive that word inside of us. It gets stuck up here, and it never gets down into the heart. It never gets down into the soul. It never gets to the place where we begin to operate and live by faith and begin to walk according to the Word of God. And so, so in verse 37, though, of that same verse, he says, For the Word of God will never fail. Remember, it's the Word of God. The Word of God is 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 powerful and this is something that's this is a weapon of our warfare see God sent the word to do something I wonder I wonder if Mary hadn't received it whose name would we be saying today because that word would have never returned to God void it would have gone and done exactly that seed would have been planted and Jesus Christ would have walked upon the earth <laughs> Some of you got to get it tonight. For the word of God will never fail. It will never fail in its purpose. The Bible says that the word of God will go forth and it will not return unto God un unfulfilled, uncompleted. It will not return unto God void. When God sends out a word of healing, I can tell you this, you may miss it because of your lack of faith, but somebody will open up and that word will, will return to God saying, I've healed them. I've healed because it will do what it's called to do. So first of all, the word was offered in that first step of the birth. The angel waited, and, and, the, and the challenge was presented because Mary began to think, well, how am I going to do this? Who am I? What am I? How can I do this? I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not wise enough. I mean, fill in the blank. What have you, begin, what, what, what have you been telling yourself all of your life? Come on. Yeah, I mean, I mean don't, don't act like we, we, we've been... Uh, Full of faith all of our lives. Because I, I, I mean, I can tell you, there, there's been some times in my life. There have been moments in my life where, where things were not working out. And, and, and my faith went, went, from, went from solid to, you know, kind of. Some of you might understand that like that stock market. <laughs> I was talking to somebody. They said, what, what do you think it's going to do? I said, it's either going to go up or down. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what it does. <laughs> but see, the word had to come. And the word does not return void. But the, the, but the challenge was presented. And so, our attitude, as we talked about, our attitude. So the first step is, is our attitude towards the presented word of God when God presents the, the possibility before us. When he begins to speak something to us, when you're standing or sitting in a church and you're hearing the word of God being presented and you hear it and you say, man, that is so good. But what's the but in your mind? 
What is what is that thing in your mind that says that that is saying that is saying but what 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 is what is it what is it trying to do? It, but I can't because of this. I need to I, I need to first get this out of the way. I need to do this, and the word of God is waiting on you. What is your attitude towards the Word of God? Well, I know that God is all-powerful, but I don't believe He's all-powerful in me. I know that God can do it, but but surely He wouldn't do it for me. How, How many of us have felt that way? Surely God will do it for anybody, and I can believe for my brother, I can believe for my sister, but for myself, I just don't feel like I've never won anything. I participate in a lot of events, and I've done all of these things, and I just don't believe that God will ever do anything. And it's our attitude towards that word. And many times we get stuck right there because because it's like we say, we're basically telling God, go to the next person. I'm not ready yet. God's saying, I wanted to bless you. I wanted to change your life. I wanted to transform you. You see, it's our attitude towards the presented word. And these, and and listen to me, the principles that we're talking about will will govern every step of your life in the faith as you move forward. Every time you're presented with the word, there will be a challenge. Every time God wants to do something powerful, great in your life, there will always be a challenge. When you're sitting there and you're, you're reading the word of God and all of a sudden, because you're a believer and you're believing in the word of God and you'll read the word of God sometimes and all of a sudden something will stand out to you and something that you've read a thousand times, but all of a sudden one day it will jump out of the pages at you. It will hit you dead in the chest and you will know that God is speaking to you and it will be upon that moment and that moment what you, what you choose, what you determine. Are you going to receive the Word of God? How is, how is it that you're going to respond to the Word of God? You see, even though it's in the beginning, when we, when we accept Jesus Christ in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our outlook towards God, when we, when we began to accept, when we accepted and received Jesus Christ, it was just God, we were at the end of our rope, many of us. God, I don't, I don't know any other way. And we were a lot like Mary. I've tried everything. I can't find hope in anything. I'm lost. There's a void. There's a great need. And we presented all that to God. And then we said, but if you can use nothing, if you can take nothing, here I am. And in that moment, that's when, that's when Christ, that's when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and plants the seed of Christ in you. And at that moment, all things are possible. When you look out there and you see those oak trees, and and if you were ever to to be able to go, and I've never been, but you go out there to California, you see those redwood trees, those sequoia trees that stand, they say, 300, 400, 500 feet tall, and they drive cars through some of them, just the holes in them. You think of those, those, those sequoia trees that all came from a seed. It, the power of it was in the seed. It didn't come. It didn't come as a tree, and they just planted it. No, no, no it comes from a seed, from a, from a seed. You see the oak tree. You see a plant. Whatever it is, it comes from a seed, and everything is in the seed. Every possibility in your life is found in the seed of Christ. Everything that you will ever need, everything that you and I will ever, ever, ever need in this life is found in the seed of Christ that is in us. And that's why we're to guard the seed. That's why we're to cultivate the seed. And this is, this is the nature of the first step. But all along, God presents us with His Word, the challenge, and remember what we talked about, the cost. Because it's not easy, there's a cost involved. Because had God not put a cost on there, you and I would have taken advantage of it and you'd have said, well, I wrecked that car, I need another one. 
Oh well, well, well for those for those people that that never paid for a car, never never bought anything, had everything handed to them, they're spoiled. I can tell you this: they 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 take nothing, they they everything for granted. They just okay, get another one, get another one, get another one. I can tell you this: if you have to work for it, you have to buy it, you have to you have to cultivate, you have to do something for it. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You don't touch it. Don't sit there. That's my car. I mean, <laughs> fenders could be falling off, but you don't. Hey, that's that's my car. Why? Because because I put, I paid a cost. I paid a price for it. This is why Christ says, anyone who wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. There's a price to follow Jesus Christ. And when you begin to understand the price that comes with it, and, and here's the thing, when you're invested in it, then it means something to you. And, and, and I wonder sometimes, and I, and I believe that this is, this is one of the biggest reasons why God says for us to give. And talks about the tithe. Because if you're never invested in the thing, you could care less about it. If you're not invested in the church, you care less about it. If you don't have some skin in the game, who cares? You go to work every day, who cares? You don't have anything invested in it. But I can tell you this, the owner of that company that invested their life savings into that company to make it grow, I can tell you this, they care about it. And see, and you, you won't care about your relationship until you have something invested into your relationship. And this is where the cost comes. See, now, now when all of this is settled, and only when it's settled, then can we begin to move forward with God? When we get this resolved, that we see the, 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 when, when the word is presented, the challenge is there, and the cost has been paid, then God says, okay, now they're ready. Now they're ready to, now, now the seed is, is beginning to grow. So, why is it that the Lord never explains anything to the unsaved? Because they've never stopped to receive. For you and I, we've never, we, the, the Word of God never made sense until we took the first step and we said, by faith, God, I don't know how this works. I don't know what, but I, I accept it by faith. And see, and this is the part where so many people, they, they, they get stuck right there because they cannot accept something by faith. I, I, I mean, I think this is, this is, this is as, as the Bible says, He's revealed it unto babes. He's revealed it unto children. A children, you say, okay, jump. They see you, they jump. Sometimes you turn around and they still jump. Why? Because you're there, you're near. And so by faith, they say, if, if mom or dad's right close by, then surely they'll never let me fall. And they just jump by faith. And see, if you and I are never willing to take the first step, we will never see what God has for us. And so the unbeliever... It, this is it, it's in God's will. This is God's word that you and I must come in faith. First of all, believing. Why? Because God has done everything. And then at that moment, when we begin to practice or step out in faith, then the word of God begins to open to us. Heaven is going to remain closed to those who remain closed to God. Remember, the heavens were not supposed, if you remember in our previous studies, the heavens were not supposed to be closed. They were supposed to be open because as, as Jesus tells Nicodemus, from you shall see the heavens open. Stephen sees the heavens open. The heavens were never meant to be closed to those of us who are called believers. We were always supposed to have fellowship with God. And so you and I, as we begin to respond to the work of, Word of God or the lack of our response will determine what happens next in our lives. So the first step that when the Word of God is presented, second is that through much conflict, it's accepted and surrendered to. And this is why I believe that sometimes people, people, people think too quickly that, oh yeah, I believe God's Word. I believe God's Word. But they're, but they're never really to, ready to put some skin in the game. They're never really ready to, 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 to make a sacrifice. But as she said, be it, be it unto me according to thy word. She was willing to take whatever 
the cost. Whatever trouble came our way, be it unto me. When God looks at Jesus, when you read the Psalms, and He says, ask me, and I'll give you the nations, and I'll give you the heathen as your, your inheritance. And that, and that scripture, I believe it's, I believe it's uh, Psalm chapter 2, if I'm not mistaken. When He says, ask me, and I'll give you the, 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 the nations, and the heathen is your inheritance. What Jesus understood is the word was presented. But he understood that there was a cross that was before him. He understood that there was a, there was a price to be paid for the, for the nations and for the heathen. And God said, and I, and I love the way God says it. He says, ask me and I will give it. You think that Jesus didn't know that there was a cross? You think that Jesus didn't know that there was a price to be paid? When you and I begin to ask God, that's, I, I believe that that's probably one of the reasons why we don't get many times what we're asking for because every time we ask for something, we know that we should understand that there is a cost that's going to be paid. If you want a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, a, a great relationship, it's going to cost you something. If you want a great relationship, bring it into your home. If you want a great relationship with your spouse, it's going to cost you something. If you want something, anything that is worth anything is going to cost us something. And so when we pray, we don't realize, okay, God, we, God, God, I, I, I want the heathen. I want to be able to pray for the sick and watch them, watch them be healed. And you see, we, we do this because we've been taught to do this. We've been taught that there's no cost to any of this stuff. And so this is what we do. God, I, I want you to use me and I want you to use me mightily. And God says, okay, I can do it. Ask me and I'll do it for you. But understand, there's a cross. Understand that there is a price that is going to be paid. It's not going to be, oh, the, the sick are here and, and we're just healing them. And, 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 oh, they're going out the door. And then, and then we go home and, and we, you know, we sip tea and, and we go to sleep and wake up the next morning. And it's just going to be healing. I can tell you this, there's going to be some low, dark valleys. There's going to be some sleepless nights because you're spending all night in prayer because you know that the devil is going to come against you. You know that the devil is, 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 is there's going to be spiritual warfare. There is a price that is going to be paid. And the reason why many people do not receive is because they're not willing to pay the price. And so they just say, well, I can live without it. You, wanna, you, you, you want God to do something great in your life? The greater it is, the greater the cost. The greater it is, the greater the cross. We don't like to hear that. I just wanted to come to Jesus so that He can heal me, so that He could deliver me, so that everything would be well in my life and I could, and I could just, every, you know, peaches and cream. But it doesn't work like that. When she said, be it according unto me, she, she knew that this wasn't going to be easy. The word is presented. The word is accepted. And then the word begins to germinate in us. And the spirit makes the word germinate within us. By means of the word of God. And not until the word of God has found a response. Can the words begin be, become living within us. And this is why the unsaved person can never know, know the meaning of the Word of God. Listen to what 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says. We talked about this. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. But the people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. And those who are spiritual can, can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts, and who, can, who, can, who knows enough to teach Him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. And I love this. I, I love this because in the King James it says, the carnal man cannot understand or receive spiritual things. 
And we cannot be carnal and spiritual at the same time. And that's, that's, that's where so many people want to live. They want to live. They want to live right in the middle. I want to live as close to the world as I can. And I want to have one foot in, in the world. And I want to have one foot in, in, in church, in, in Christianity, in my walk with God. And I, and I want the best of both worlds. And that's why you have nothing. Because you can't make a choice. It's going to cost you one way or another. It'll either cost you now or it will cost you later. Or it may cost you both now and later. Depending on the choice that you make. And so he says, for we have the mind of Christ. This is why we understand spiritual things. In the, in the King James it says, they, they can judge all things, but they themselves are judged by no man. And that's why we often say we can see something and see the destruction that's coming from it. And as a spiritual person, but a carnal man says, why are you judging me? And it's like, I'm not judging you in the sense of condemning you to hell. All I'm telling you is I can see something that you don't see because, because God has given me eyes to see things. And if you keep living that way, and if you keep doing those things, you are going to be destroyed because the wages of sin is death. Well, you can't judge me. I'm not judging you. I'm just warning you. And then they say, well, well you this and you that. And, and we just kind of look and just, well, I mean, I expected that. Doesn't hurt me. Doesn't bother me. Why? Because I know better. Because I know what he's saying about me isn't true. But what I've told him is truth. It's not because I don't like that person. It's not because I don't love that person. It's actually the opposite because I do love that person. And they'll hate you because they hated him first. But we have the mind of Christ. But how can we have the mind of Christ if we don't have the seed of Christ? And, and, and you and I, we, we hear these statements and we think, well, yes, I know we have the mind of Christ, and, and, but we don't, really, we don't really understand that, no, this is literal. I have the mind of Christ. Go back and read the, the, the entirety of that chapter, chapter 2. He says, who knows the mind of a man except the spirit of the man? And who knows the mind of God except the spirit of God? And then he says, and then he says but we... But the Spirit of God reveals these things to us. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives in me. And so what He does is He dredges out the things of God, the thoughts of God, the heart of God, the deep things, and He brings them and reveals them to me. How can He reveal the things of God to me if He's not real in me? He lives in us. He's real in me. He's real in you. Jesus Christ is in you. Not figuratively speaking, this is, why this, this is why it's so powerful that Christ lives in you and me. He lives in us. He's powerful in us. He overcomes all things. With Christ, I can do all things. On, myself, on my own, these things are impossible with men. But with God, all things are possible. And I love the thought that, that, that Christ lives in me. There's an actual real power that comes from heaven itself that dwells inside of me and it's operating in me and through me. That's what the Bible says. And, and again, we don't have all the time in the world to get to everything. But the meaning of any word of God, it demands an inward work of the Holy Spirit to make it live, to cause it to come to pass. It's the Holy Spirit that begins to work in you and I to make it germinate. And our response to it opens the way for the Spirit to bring life. Our response, if we reject it, the Spirit won't, won't bring life in that area. And that's why you have these, these so-called carnal Christians. I mean, they're Christians, but they don't ever seem to get anywhere. Always moping around. Always, always defeated. Always wounded. Why? Well, oh, well, what happened to the Word of God? This is why it's so powerful to feed yourself on the Word of God. I, I am the righteous. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Why do, why, why do you think the words that, of, that you speak are so powerful? Let the, word, let the 
let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I am redeemed, Satan. I am the, the, the righteousness of God in Christ. I don't care what you say about me. It's what Christ has done in me and who Christ is in me that comes against everything that you say. See, the Word of Christ formed within, initially, progressively. It's the third step in bringing in, in, us into the being. This new man, the church, making us, conforming us into the very image of Jesus Christ. We become like Christ, not God. We don't become God, but we become like Christ. In other words, Christ is, is, is gaining ascendancy in us. And it's very, it, 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 and we have to think of it like this. You see, when Mary, of the human race, her race, her nature, didn't enter the seed, the seed entered her. She didn't go into the seed, the seed came into her. And the same thing with you and I, the seed came into us. And, and the seed begins to transform us. When Christ was born of Mary, there took no, it took no place. And Mary took no place inside of that seed. It was above the human nature altogether. It was, it was completely different. It was completely of a different world, if you will. Mary had a long lineage in her, in, in her past of murderers, adulterers, prostitutes, and all of those things, but none of that came into the seed. The seed overcame all of that. I want you to think about that. None of that came into the seed, but the seed overcame all of that. And when Christ is in me, it doesn't matter what I've done in the past. It doesn't matter who you were. And this is, this is where so many people get so tangled up in their mind that, that, that if you just knew, Pastor, what, what happened in my life, are you saved? That's, and and, and, and let, me, let me do it now because, because I don't want to do it when you're sitting in my chair across from me. It's easier doing it like this. It's almost like you just have to tell them, are you saved? Well, yes, I'm saved. Then Christ lives in you. Yes, Christ lives in me then the life that you now live, you live by the faith of the Son of God. You have the mind of Christ. You have the power of heaven dwelling inside of you, and you're telling me that He has the power to save you, but He doesn't have the power to heal your mind? You're telling me that He doesn't have the power to, to, to take whatever happened in your past and, 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 and make it new? He, he doesn't have the power to overcome an addiction. He doesn't have the power to overcome a prostitution. He doesn't have the power to do all of these things because you're not letting Him have the power in you. And that's really what it comes down to. Those things don't overcome Christ. Christ said, I've overcome the world. And now I'm inside of you to overcome the world inside of you. And we have to understand that. Well, I know these things happen to you. And I'm not being insensitive. I'm not making light of the things that have happened to you. But until you surrender that to Christ and say, God, I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do. But I'm trusting you. I'm taking a step of faith. In Christ, I need you to take care of this thing in my life. Then Christ can say, that's what I've been waiting for. Now I can bring healing to it. And saying some people live tortured and tormented all their lives because of their past and because of the things that they've done. And they're trying to always make up for it. They're trying, to, they're trying to do it in their own strength and in their own power. And Christ is saying, I'm in you. I can overcome this. I can destroy the power of Satan in your life. And this is the same way that we're born anew. It's, it's Christ in us. The same miracle that took place in Christ's birth is the same miracle that takes place in you and me. The same Holy Spirit overshadows us and implants within us the seed of Christ, the Word of God. And He speaks a word over you. I know that you were, you, you were, you were the devils. And, 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 and the Bible teaches us this. Go to Romans. You better read Romans again. You were, you were married to the devil. But you've divorced him, and until that divorce, until death, until you died, you died unto sin. 
Now you could be raised again and now Christ could be your husband. You couldn't, you couldn't come to, to, to Christ until the death took place. Why? Because that's the way it is. A, a woman or man can't marry another person. That's what the Bible tells, it tells us until that person dies. And, and of course, we, we, you know, we know the extenuating circumstances in the human sense of things and, we, and, and, and the grace of God and the power of God against all that. But when we're spiritually speaking, these are the things that are absolute. And so you and I had to die so that we could become the bride of Christ. And so now we're no longer married to, devil, to the devil, but, but, but this is what we do. When we, when we begin to, to start messing back with sin, what are we doing? We're committing adultery. We're messing with the, we're, we're messing with the wrong person. What do you mean you're going back out with him? That's the whole story of Hosea. Hosea brings the prostitute in. And she keeps running out there to her lovers. And he keeps going back and bringing her in. Because God does the same thing with you and I. He keeps bringing us back in because of His great love for us. But the thing is, is He can help us overcome those things. If we will surrender to Him, the Holy Spirit can, can deliver us from these things. Because the new creation that was brought into being by the Holy Ghost, and all that we are, all that we were, was cut off from Him. And, and none of us went into Him, but He came into us, and He begins to overtake us. And that new man was born delivered. He never needed a deliverance. Jesus Christ never needed to get saved. He never needed to be delivered from an addiction. He never had to worry about asking for forgiveness. He was, he was born delivered. And, and when He came inside of me, it was no different. And He overcame everything inside of me. You know, that's the beauty. When, we, when, you begin to think of, when you begin to think of the crucifixion and you begin to look at Isaiah 53 and verse 5 where He was wounded for our transgressions, go over that again. He was, he was bruised for our iniquities. You, you know, an iniquity is an internal sin. It's an addiction. It's something. So He bled on the inside. He bled on the outside. He was pierced through. His, his flesh was ripped. He bled in every single way so that we could be delivered inside. We could be delivered outside. We could be delivered completely and totally by the blood of Jesus Christ. He was born delivered. Christ in us is something other than ourselves. And that's what makes us heavenly. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Only that which is of Christ will inherit the kingdom of God. And we have to continue to recognize the dif difference between what is Christ and what is of ourselves. And we get so caught up in this. Well, well, I think, well, stop thinking so much. And start believing the Word of God. Well, I would, but, but if you just knew... Well, well, I know that my God is greater than anything that, I can fa that I'm facing. My God is greater than anything that you will face, anything that you will encounter, anything that you have been through or gone through. Now, now don't get me wrong, it may take some time in the process of healing, but you keep surrendering that thing to God, and you keep giving it to God, and I'm telling you, you will be completely delivered. You'll be completely made whole. And I believe that with all my heart. We have to continue to recognize that all that enters the kingdom of God must go through the test of death. And all that is subject to death will die. Anything that can die will die. Anything that cannot die won't die. And anything that does not die, it's of Christ. And everything that dies, it was us. It was that carnal man, that flesh. Christ is not subject to death. And this is our hope of glory, that Christ is in us. That Christ lives in you. Now I wanted to go through some other things, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to do just a quick wrap up if I can. See, the true church now is, is exactly what Christ, the heavenly man, was. The true church. And I say the true church. Because not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into that kingdom. And I, and I, and I love it because, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I just, I, I marvel at the word of God. Because there's a lot of people that say, Lord, Lord, that will never enter the kingdom of heaven because they've never spent any time 
to study the word of God and truly mean what it is to be a, a, a true believer. There, and, and, and when Jesus begins to tell the story, he says, many are going to come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord. And then they're going to say, did not we cast out devils? OK, you cast out devils. Did not we feed the, the, the homeless and did not we did not we give to the poor? Did not we do all of these things? And he never says that they didn't do those things. Did not we use our talents? Did not we do this? Did not we give our tithes? Did not we, you know, I mean, you name it. You go down the line. Did not we do all of these things? And, and the sad thing is, is many of these are the people that are under grace. That, that just use, and, and, and I was going to get into it. I can't get into it. Romans chapter 6. You can read it this week. But many people use this grace as an excuse to sin. And Paul says, God forbid. Why would you go back hanging out with the devil when you've been delivered? And then he says, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And so he's, they, they come before him. When did, didn't, when, did not we do this? Didn't we do this? Didn't we have this big old campaign? Didn't we do that? And didn't we have that trailer pull up? And, and we stood out there all day on that Saturday giving. Didn't we hold VBS? And how many families came into the church because of VBS? Jesus, didn't you know that I taught in a Sunday school room? Didn't you know that I did this? And didn't you know that I taught? That, did, that, I mean, we, and he's going to say, I never knew you. I never knew you. And then he says, the other ones are going to come and say, he's going to say, well, when you clothed me, when you fed me, they're going to say, when did we feed you? When did we clothe you? When did, when, when did we, when did we visit you in prison? And he says, whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done unto me. I mean, what a thought. The very people that tell you right now, you can live like hell and still make heaven are going to be the very ones that are going to be given their laundry list before God. We did this and we did that and we did that. And, and so I wasted all my time. Yeah, you wasted your time. And that's why the most important thing is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And this all the law and commandments are bound up to love. But it's the power of Christ that is in us. And Romans, and, and, I'll, and I'll close with this because I do want to give you at least this. I, I can't get into chapter 6, but I want to, I want to at least give you this in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, now I don't know if you have one of those Bibles that stops right there. Because there are some translations that take out the, the, the next part of it. You see, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And I love what Paul says next, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It's a choice. It's a choice. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You and I get to choose. Father, today, We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would allow this word, your word, to really come alive in us. That we wouldn't resist you. As in the day of, as your word says, in the day of provocation. When they provoked you to anger when they provoked you to jealousy, when they provoked you because their heart was not with you. But Father, I pray that God, that your word that is spoken today, Christ, that it would come alive in us, that, that Holy Spirit, that we would, we would understand that it's you living in us, revealing Christ to us, and revealing Christ through us. I pray Holy Spirit that we would understand that this is, this is absolutely real. That, that Jesus you're here. You're here living in, in, in each one. That is called upon your name. And you are able to overcome every doubt and every fear. Within them. 
You're able to overcome every hurt, every wound, every scar, everything that the enemy has done and how, how, how sin has, has tried to destroy their life. You are able to restore. I pray, Jesus, that inside of us we would allow you to, to, to grow, that we might grow in grace, that we might grow in faith, that we would grow Christ in you. And that you would, you would become more, we would become less. The Lord, that we would understand that, God, that the price that we pay really isn't a cost when we consider the benefits. When we consider, Father, really what you're doing in our lives, and, and it may cost us now, but God, what you are doing in our lives and how the glory of God is being revealed in us and through us and how your glory, Father, will ultimately overtake us one day for the, for the honor of your name. Let us never take for granted, God, that not for a moment are you away from us. And that every choice and everything that we do, every, everything that we watch, everywhere that we go, every, everything that we listen to, God, you are there listening to it in us. For we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that, God, that we would not subject you to things, Father, that are not worthy of you because, God, your word says that the, your seed remains in us and there is no sin in you. I pray that you would help us to overcome the sin, the obstacles that are in our way, the troubles, the doubts, the fears that cause us to, to draw back rather than take that step forward in faith and wait to see what you have for us. I pray that, God, that we would have a persistent faith, a faith that would, would, would be relentless in its pursuit of you to see all the things that you're doing in our lives, God, and to take hold of each and every one. Help us, God, today to understand your word more deeply for the glory and the honor of your name. Be glorified in each one of us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you. <clears throat> amen for being here this evening. Um, let us not take lightly the word of God. But let us let us let us take hold of the word of God, and whatever whatever it is that God speaks to you, I pray that you would you would begin to pray over those things and watch how God works in your life as as you do surrender to Him. Um, thank you for your faithfulness. Um, those of you that are watching online, thank you for being with us. You can give on our app. You can give online if you came ready to give. Brother Mario's there, but God bless you. And uh, thank you for being here tonight in Jesus' name.